Welcome to Glad Tidings Wednesday night service. And you know what? We are victorious. Thank you, worship team, for reminding us that he is under our feet. Well, a special reach out to our family online. You might not be in the pews, but you're in our hearts, and we know God sees you, and he's going to minister to you tonight in this service. We have one very important announcement and our ushers have the clipboards already we are beefing up the choir and we need you if you can hum a tune and you want to praise god in this uh avenue we want you and so we just ask that you would sign up that clipboard because great things are happening how many people believe god sees you right now raise your hand and how many people are going to open their hearts and just tell them, Jesus, do what you want to do in my life. Raise your other hand. Okay, we're ready to love on Jesus. Are you ready? Come on.
has done. Come on. Hallelujah. And look what the Lord has done. Come on. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what, what the Lord has done. Lord has done. What the Lord has done. Lord, just praise him. We praise you, we praise you Jesus. We've got to see what the Lord has done.
Jehovah Nisi, yes you are, Lord you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom, oh, oh my Prince of Peace, and I worship you.
Just to be close to you, it's my desire. Just to be close to you, just to be close to you, just to be close to you, it's my desire. Just to be close. Just to be close to you, just to be close to you, it's my desire, this is my desire, just to be close to you, just to be close to you, just to be close to you, it's my desire, just to be Just to be close to you, just to be close to you, it's my desire. Just to be close to you, just to be close to you, just to be close to you, it's my desire.
Just lift your voices, hallelujah, lift them up, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glorify your name in your house, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glorify your name. I don't know if you can find a house like this. I'm not sure. This, this place is holy ground. It's a one and only. Historically, the great moves of God have come out of the womb of this house. And uh, there's just not many like this place. A house of worshipers. A place that sings in the Spirit, flows in the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Uh, this is a rarity. I found a 1962 two-door Chevy Impala, all original, aqua paint, aqua silver and black interior original. And I'm telling you, it was a one and only. And you got in that thing, and here's what you said, hey, baby. You get in that car, hey, baby. And we're raising money for missions, and so I put it on a special consignment place. And that place had Porsches, 57 Porsche. It had, it had a 62 Corvette, red interior, white snap on top, hallelujah. Had a Rolls Royce, had Bentleys. And my car was parked in the back part and there's all these cars in front of me. And they broke in there and they pushed the Bentley away. Somebody help me in this place. And they pushed the Rolls Royce away and they stole my car. I'm telling you, pastor had a ride, a real one. Someone say right now, now men do not backslide. Say aqua, say aqua black and silver. And someone say 327. It was a real, and they broke into that place and they stole my car on consignment. And so the owner called me and said, Pastor Schott, I heard you're one who gives forgiveness. You're in the forgiveness business. He said, I can't believe it. We had a beautiful Bentley. It was a 1972 and it was just perfect. And we had this and this, but they took your car. And some of you don't understand this. Someone just say it with me, hola. Someone to understand. I'm telling you, our brothers had to have that car. Someone say, hola. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, so I got bad news. They stole it. But I got good news. I can give you double the amount that you're selling it for. Oh, Hallelujah. Look at someone say, steal anything on me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just steal from me. There was no car like that car. And I'm going to say this to you. There's no place like this place. You have stepped into a phenomenal place. And I believe every devil in hell wants to keep people out of this place because this place, the glory of the Lord, the tangible presence of God is in this place. Uh, I didn't mean for this to happen, but I, I think about a month ago, there was a lady that came on a Wednesday night and she went to the wrong church. She got mixed up where she was and she came in here and I'd never seen it before. And God gave me a prophetic word from heaven over her. How many are thankful that you go to the wrong place it becomes the right place? Yeah. Hallelujah. And she just came to me and she said, how did you know all those things? I said, I didn't. It's the house. It's not Pastor Shot. It's the house. And I, I was told, I guess she got into a, a life group and I see her in church uh, all the time and her hands are lifted. Hallelujah. This is a phenomenal place. Give the Lord a hand clap. Come on, everybody. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Hey, let's give our tithes and our offerings tonight. And uh, ushers, would you hand everybody an envelope? And I'm going to give you just to quickly, uh, just a concept that you'll understand it. An online e-transfer, or send it to 3456 Fraser Street, Vancouver, British Columbia. Or we have a mailbox right on Fraser Street. I want to give you this scripture tonight. It's found in 1 Peter 
chapter 5, verse 6. Humble yourself. Let me tell you what your offering does, your tithe does. You're humbling yourself before God. How many want to make more money than your brain can, can, can figure out? How many want to make more money than your talent can do? But the Bible says what happens is when you give your tithe, you're humbling yourself before God. And you're saying to God, I am submitting to what you can do and not relying just on what I can do. And it says, if you'll humble yourself, what do you do? Humble yourself. And it says, the mighty hand of God will come on your life. So when you give your tithe and you give your offering, what are you doing? Say, I'm humbling myself. And what does God say? I'm going to put my mighty hand on your life. Hallelujah. How many want the mighty hand of God on your life? Stand with me tonight in the house of the Lord. I declare the mighty hand of God to be on you. Come on, somebody. I declare the mighty hand to be on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Poverty, being broke, is not for me. It is not my inheritance. I'm not called to it by God. I'm called for the mighty hand of God to be on my life, to be on all my children, to be on the leaders of this house, to be on all the members of this house. And everybody comes to the door of this house. I declare the mighty hand of God to be upon you. Hallelujah. I break the spirit of poverty, the lie of little, and I thank you, you're the God of more than enough. We declare it right now. I declare your mighty hand to be on our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, let's give to the Lord tonight. I'm not boasting, but I was honored to be with our family a week ago at Amazing Grace. I was honored they, they let me they let me come, and we had a wonderful young lady interpreted. Uh, I don't believe she said everything I said. I think she changed some things. I think that's why the sermon was so good. <laughs> but I introduced him to somebody. I introduced him to someone named Jehovah Jireh. And I shared the covenant of the Word of God with amazing grace. It was an honor. And none of the pastors wanted to do it, so I did. And I just laid it out. And Edward came and told me that Sunday, the, the giving, how much? That much? It was... And what's it normally? About eight... The offering is normally about 8,000, approximately, okay? It was 24,000. And I, 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 didn't say, I didn't sell them lockets of hair. I didn't make goofy promises. You know, I, I didn't do anything. I just taught the Word of God. So it went 8, 9,000 up to, someone say, Jehovah Jireh. Come on. The giving that Sunday was 24,000. And all the leaders got together, and they want me to come every week. <laughs> every week. That's so exciting. And what's exciting, not, not the offering was 24000 That's not what excites me. People are in covenant with God himself. That excites me. Stand with me tonight just for a moment. I, I know many of you have had a long day. But just stretch out here. When your promise doesn't happen, you know God met you, spoke to you, it was clear to you, and in the moment, you have no doubt. You know it's going to happen, and then you have to live life. Someone say, you're right. Then you have to go to the desert to work, to your wife, to your children, to your failures, to your exhaustion, to your disappointment, and it's like it just evaporates out of you. But I want to let you know that God can't lie. And what he said he's going to do, he's going to do. But you got to pay the price of faith. You've got to keep your faith up. You can't be down, downcast, full of doubt, murmuring, complaining, being upset, being mad at everybody. You've got to keep your faith up. And when you come into the house of faith and you hear the word of faith, 
what will happen is when you're under truly an anointed prophetic word, your faith comes alive again. The worship brings the heaviness off you, and your faith comes alive again, and you can see clearly, and you believe what God has for you. So tonight, I'm going to take you on a short journey of a battle of faith where there was a promise beyond the natural ability for it to happen. Often when God gives a prophetic promise, it's usually beyond your reason, your connections, your drive, and your ability. Listen to me right now. Because God wants something in your life. Somebody yell at me, please. Hallelujah. That you can brag about your God. You can boast on your God. Hallelujah. It was just simple. Lord, I pray it sunshines tomorrow. Well, I pray it does too. But that isn't what God's talking about. It's something beyond your ability, your IQ, your drive, your connection, even your belief systems. A lot of you were raised in a doubt system. You don't even know it. Your family was negative. Everything was negative. And then you went to a negative church. I want you to know tonight, hallelujah, you are not in a negative church. You're in a house where the dreams of God that have been buried will be resurrected again, and you will have a dance. And I want all the people that aren't dancers, when I'm done with this message, you'll be dancing in the aisle. You'll say, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. God says the truth. He means what he says, and it's going to happen in my life. I'm so proud of my youngest son, finally. He's such an integrous, wonderful, humble young man of God. But he was a kid that wasn't. His older sister's 15 years older than him. And he shouldn't have been born. But Jody Ann and I stood in faith. God told us we're going to have five children. And Jody Ann, we had four children. Some of say, that's enough. Come on, somebody help me right now. And she set a place setting out for the child that wasn't. And believe God. And that young man miraculously came. And I want to let you know what he did to me. When you're 40 and you have a new kid, you're young. Hallelujah. You're young again. Hallelujah. He preserved my youth. He did preserve my youth. Hallelujah. People look at us. And go, Are you guys Mormons? Come on, somebody help me in this place. Hallelujah. How many, how many kids did you have? Five? Five? And Jody Ann was into 12, but this, I had to put my foot down. I had to put my foot down. Go ahead and be seated tonight. Thank you, worship team. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2, first of all, God has to deliver you. I said God has to, to deliver you before he can offer you a promise. If you're in the wrong place, with the wrong attitude, with the wrong people, God can't speak to you. But when God speaks, when you're in the wrong place, you're in your father's house, you're with the wrong family, you're in the wrong country, and you respond to what God says, he can speak to you. And here's what he said. I will make you a great nation. Just hear it. I will make you a great nation. He, he, he had no children. But God is telling him, out of your loins, I'm going to make you into a great nation. And he could hardly hear it. God gave him a prophetic promise and when you've been in a daze and you've had all kinds of problems and all kinds of setbacks and all kinds of hurt and all kinds of disappointment and your mother-in-law moves in, somebody yell at me, it's hard to believe. And I want to let you know tonight that God repeats himself. He doesn't just tell you once. And so here he is with a word that's impossible. He's just trying to get out of town. He's trying to move on. He's not thinking about a great nation, but God says, I'm going to make a great nation out of you. Go with me, chapter 12 and verse 4. Look what it says here, 75 years old. How many believe God should talk to you in your teens and 20s? I always tell the Lord, the Lord's woke me up, and I'm a real sleeper. 
I'll put my head down. I'm out in three minutes. I give everything I am, and I can go to sleep in three minutes. And the Lord will wake me up at 2 in the morning. And here's the first thing I said, you had all day. Come on, somebody. I said, you had all day, Lord. I listened to you. I want to please you. You had all day, 2 in the morning. I'll never forget this one time. I hadn't talked to this man 12, 13, 14 years. And the Lord woke me up and said, your friend needs your help right now. Huh? It was in the middle of COVID. India was just shut down. And I called him in India. I said, Dr. Thomas, this is Pastor Shot. The Lord woke me up and told me, you need help right now. Now, I want to let you know how humble he is. Oh, no, my brother. God is so good. I know he's good, but he's going to be better if you just open your heart to me. He said, he said, everything is good. I said, Matthew, talk to me. He said, well, it's been a challenge, but God is faithful. I said, you've got 200 orphans. Cut through it and tell me how much money you need. Wave your hand at me, somebody. I don't want to play around. He said, well, we're down to our last $100. We have 200 children and we have no food. I said, well, God did wake me up. And the children will eat, won't they, glad tidings? I said, I'll get with my trustees. They're godly. They hear voice of the Lord. And something will happen quickly. Nathaniel opened it up, put it together. We wired him $20,000. So I want to let you know that fed them for four months. 200 children ate because, because there was a whisper in the night. Somebody hear this. God will whisper to you in the night about something in your life. But you can't say it's COVID. Say he's 20, 75 years old. Say it. He's 75 years old. You can't say it's, I'm too tired. I've had too many disappointments. God hasn't done this and God hasn't done that. You will curse the prophetic promise God has for your life when your promise doesn't happen yet. Who would know that the trustees heard the Lord and they said 10% of everything that comes in glad tidings with no expenses, no overhead, not hire someone and not have banquets to try to convince people to give money to missions. It's going directly to the mission field. Directly. <laughs> Dr. Thomas was told by the Lord to have the orphanage. And the Lord spoke to him 20 years ago and said, I will meet all the needs. But during COVID, 99% of the Americans stopped giving to missions. They're completely out of money. But I want to let you know tonight, God isn't. And I don't care if you're 75 years old, and I don't care if it hasn't happened yet. I'm going to say this to you, and I'm going to put a dagger in your doubt for a moment and say, it's going to happen. I'm going to say it louder. It's going to happen. He's 75 years old. Look at Genesis 12, 7. Look what it says, your descendants. Your descendants. Now he's a little freer. He's out from where he was. And historians will tell you the place where he was over the next 20 years, five nations overtook that land and it was wiped out by floods. It's interesting how God's moving you from somewhere to somewhere to save you from destruction. Five different nations where he came from, wiped out, took over everything, slaughtered everything, and then a major flood came. And the land was useless. And God says in his word right here that I am going to bless your descendants. It's another pro uh, prophetic word. Look what he did in uh, chapter 12, verse 7. Look what he did. Watch this. Watch this, everyone. He built a altar. Very important. A lot of you are excited about what God is going to do, but you cannot sustain it unless you worship. It won't happen and so what he did is he built an altar and offered the aroma of praise to God. And it was a place where he said, this is what God said. And your worship reminds you of what God says. 
your worship. How many have figured out by now I love singing in the Spirit? I just love singing in the Spirit. And I know what it does, it irritates certain people and I enjoy it even more because of that. Because their flesh is being ir ir irritated so they can begin to what? Walk in the Spirit. They walk with eyes of faith and eyes of hope. And how many know when we corporately get into that flow and worship in the Spirit, how many know things start lifting off you? And you, you begin to be heaven bound and you begin to believe God is bigger than anything. Would you give me the opportunity tonight to really bring it? Hallelujah. Or would you want me to be, hello friends, it's so good to you here. Because I have a real reverend voice, if you ever heard it before. I had, hello friends, are you comfortable? Ushers, electrify the pews. Hallelujah, here we go, glory to God. Watch this progression here, chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 10, 11, and 12. Say this word, famine. When you're trying to focus on what God says he's going to do, a famine comes. A loss of a job, a, a loss of someone you love, a calamity, a heartache, a, a, a confusion. And so that's what took place. The farthest thing from his mind is he was going to have descendants blessed. He was going to be a holy nation. He's going, how are we going to get through this problem? How many are so tired of the problems that occupy 99% of your faith and energy? Put your hands up right now. Some stupid boss, I'll say it again, some stupid boss, some person acting up, a situation here and a situation there, and what happens is you lose all your faith and all your strength because you're so busy putting out fires. It's gonna take a while for this to get better. Then he did the stupidest thing. And I hope none of you have done something this stupid. The enemy came and stood in front of him and he said, oh, to his wife, oh, they're gonna kill me, you're so beautiful. Say you're my sister. Now, I, I wanna deal with this for a moment. If I said, Jody Ann, tell him you're my sister, I want to let you know that that is the end of me. I want to make it very clear that she'll begin, and she does wonderful calligraphy. She would write my name beautiful, Pastor Vince Schott died this day. She would invite everybody. She'd even fake a tear. But I want to say this to you right now. And some of you men don't understand. Do not say your wife is your sister. Hallelujah. And those that are a little older, please, in my presence, because I will mock you, don't call your wife mama. I don't care what nation you came from. Oh, mama, mama. I am going to mock you because it's mockable. And I might even record it and put it on national television. Here's the ones that call their wife mama. And I'll get a face picture and a side picture. He said, just say you're my sister. Now, let me, let me just help you for a moment. How many know the possibility of that night having children is not going to happen? Oh, some of you are way too religious. That will not be a candy sweet night. The night when you that day said, just say you're my sister, how many know there is no kissing? She is so mad at you. She is crazy mad at you. She even went down on one knee and said, Lord, is this the time to take him? And he says this crazy thing to the womb that has to carry the promise, and he makes it so her womb is closed, her heart is closed, and her faith is closed. And I'm not going to show you the word of God. The fool did it twice. Two different situations. How many of you right now when the pressure comes on, you've done some dumb things. I want everybody to get their hand up right now. The pressure's on you, and you just do harebrained things, foolish things, stupid things. Put your hand up. And how many have done it more than once? Put your other hand up and say, oh, God, hallelujah, keep your promises alive in my life. Some of you have pure dreams, and they're God. You're not asking for fortune. You're not asking for provision. You're asking to find the God-chosen mate for your life. And I want to let you know that's more important than position and more important than money. Listen to me. How many know it because you married the wrong one? Come on, somebody. Help me right now. The right one. The right place at the right time under the blessing of God. 
Just say you're my sister. Chapter 13. The Lord, verse 14, the Lord said to Abram, after Lot left, give what you can see. You can't see it, you can't have it. And he said, look, and what you can see, I'm gonna to give to your what? Descendants. To your descendants. Here he keeps bringing this thing up. But what happened here, Lot was in his life. The Bible says that God spoke to Abram and he went. And the Bible says, and Lot went with him. How many want me to lay it down? How many want me to lay it down? No, how many want me to lay it down? Some of you gotta get rid of your friends. You, 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 well, we've been friends for 30 years. Well, they've been doubters, they've been complainers, they've been gripers, they, they, they compromise, they spoo things, and I wanna let you know, it'll stop you from hearing God. I've had to get rid of some really, really good pastor friends. Really good. One couple, very attractive, highly gifted, but they are so floozy. They, they just are so fleshly. And Jody Ann just came to me because I'm extremely loyal. If I love you, it's, it's, it's almost impossible for me to stop loving you, dummy. And, and she said to me, we cannot have him come to glad tidings. He, she shows me the picture of his wife in a Playboy magazine. Come on, somebody, help me right now. But it was just, that's not what happened. But I just went, ooh, ooh. He's a pastor. Now, some of you need to grow with me. How, how, how many believe a pastor's wife, just help me, shouldn't look like they dance from one o'clock in the morning till four in the morning at the club? Are we in agreement with that? How many are in agreement with that? All in favor, put your hand up. All not in favor, put your hand up. Ooh. How many believe that a pastor shouldn't drink and get drunk. How many believe that? How, how, re, really good. I always, I always love it. They always say, well, pastor, mar marijuana is different. It's all natural. I said, so is dog manure. Smoke it. And Jody Ann said, we can't bring that to the house. Now, I wasn't going to. I wanted to, but I wasn't going to. But I toyed with it, even though I wasn't going to do it, because I feel sorry for him, and I like him. And Jody Ann, the other day, she just said, look at this. And I don't want to look at pastor porn. Would somebody wake up around here? Hallelujah. It was just inappropriate. And this is a great preacher. He's a wonderful man of God. He's not immoral. And his son said to him, 17-year-old son said to him, Dad, you, 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 you and Mom can't have photos like that. You're pastors. How many do not want your kids telling you what you can't do in their right? How many don't want your teenager, your 15-year-old mom, you can't be a floozy. You can't be a hussy. You can't do this and you can't do that. That's swearing. Even my grandson, I'm not even watching what's on television. He, I just cartoon, whatever. He wanted to watch it. And he goes, Paul? I go, yeah, we must turn this channel. This is demonic. Oh, yeah, I was just thinking that. I, you know, I don't have a clue what's going on. A lot left. And God said, lift up your eyes. And whatever you can see, I'm going to give to you and your, your descendants. Your descendants. See, it's a promise that hasn't happened yet, but there's always a process in the promise. And the process isn't easy. And a lot of you abort the process because you don't like the pain you're in. Somebody yell at me now. Hallelujah. You don't like where you're at. You don't like your income. You don't like nothing's coming your way. And some of you don't like your loneliness, so you'll make it happen. We'll try it again. Some of you don't like your loneliness, so you'll just make it happen. Well, the Lord told me this. And the Lord told me that. He didn't tell you your lust told you that. The Lord didn't tell you, that's lust. Jody Ann saw a man come into the church. She was a child. And I came into the church. And she was 14 years old. I was bearded. And the Lord said to her, wait, that's your husband. She went to her mom in sincerity. I said, mom, I just saw the man I'm going to marry. Her mom said, oh, that's nice, dear. 
Then I went away for two years. We didn't see each other. And I didn't know her name. I didn't know who she is. Now, some of you, you're a little different from me, but I don't like to go to the nursery and choose a wife. Somebody help me in this place right now. It's just not my style. Just go by the nursery and see, oh, this one's almost out of diapers. I think they're about ready to get married here. Or, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do that. But I just didn't see her. God blinded my eyes because he was doing something else in me. He was making me into the man that she could marry because when she saw me, I wasn't ready. God had to do things in me. God had to change my thinking and who I was. So I was in the process of God, even though she had a promise. That's the man. She never, ever dated one man. She waited for the V. Come on, somebody help me in this place. She waited for the V. Hallelujah. I was the only man that she kissed. Only man she went out. We had been dating for four months, and I'm going to Alaska to make some real money because we're getting serious. And how do you know when you get serious with a woman? Money's a part of the deal. And she said, well, aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? Huh? She said, aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? I have, well, I, she, I'm telling you, she had saved it up. She grabbed a hold of me. I have the microphone. She, she, she grabbed a hold of me, and that's where I lost my tonsils. Somebody yell with me. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. There was just from the heart. The Lord, Genesis 13, 14, the Lord said to Abram after Lot left. I'm going to say this to you right now. Some of you are going to have to wisely ditch some people. Huh? You're going to have to get some rid of some people. If they hate the house of God, they hate the presence of God, they want to argue about Scripture, they complain about everything, my suggestion is get some people who love the house of God, they love the Word of God, they love the presence of God, they're full of faith. <laughs> Jody Ann, in our age, we're seeing so many pastors are professional clergymen. They're more excited about their vacation and golfing than they are the house of God, not us. Hallelujah. Genesis 15, 2. I go childless. The heir is Eleazar. That's what happens. That's what happens. You begin to choose how you think it should turn out. You begin to say, this is what I'm going to do. And then you say, oh, by the way, God, come and bless what I want to do. Bless how I want to do it. I believe a lot of you have been damaged because the Lord warned you not to go into business with somebody and you did it anyway. How many have had some situation like that and God delivered you supernaturally by his mercy and his grace, but it could have destroyed you? And he said, no, the heir is the faithful man in my house. In my heart, I, in the past, I chose someone with my eyes who to be my successor. And they were completely wiped out. <laughs> How many know God needs to choose? And you can't make the decision even though you think you can. Because you won't have the outcome that God has for you. And God's outcome is greater than your drive, your ability, your knowledge, your know-how, and your giftings. I'm telling you what God has for you. There is no way a 22-year-old young lady could go to the Arctic and build churches. It is not possible. I don't care what you say. I don't care how good a preacher she is. I don't care how determined she is. It can't happen. She needed God moments. You see, Pastor Kay Gordon isn't Pastor Kay Gordon. She was Kay Gordon who God called above her head, above her abilities, above her connection. She didn't have resources. She didn't have money. She didn't have anything. And God supernaturally because Pastor Reg Lizelle, when she finally said, he said yes, and then he changed his mind. He said to himself, I can't send a young girl to the Arctic to freeze to death. He said, Lord, I need a sign. And a couple from there didn't even know about glad tidings, who oversaw reindeer. They were very, very capable up there. They came to this church, and they said, we don't know why we're here. The Lord led us here. 
told them where they're from. And that was the open door for Pastor Reg Lizell to give the blessing for Pastor Kay Gordon to go up and start the church. You better hear this. These are not stories. These are facts. And I, 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 I will let you know, she still, when it went down to, up to, uh, they have it up in Langley, they, they have a season where they, they raise reindeer. She'd still be painting reindeers in Langley if God didn't intervene. Hallelujah. And a lot of you will never do, someone's yelling at me right now. A lot of you will never do what God has for you to do because you're going to do it in your flesh. You're going to do it how you see it. You're going to do it how you feel it. Hallelujah. And it says here in the Word of God, and that's our standard, is the Word of God. I am not going to have second best be my heir. When the day the God's assignment is off my life for glad tidings, and it's not for a long time, but that person will love the Holy Ghost, love the Word of God, they'll love amazing grace, they'll love the people of God, they'll love the presence of God, they will have a choir, they will give to missions, and they will flow in the Holy Ghost. And I don't care how good looking they are, I don't care how sharp they are, I don't care how determined they are, I don't care about their heritage, I care that they have to do what this house is called to do. We are never, ever going through this again. Somebody yell at me right now. It ain't going to happen, baby. One time is enough to have to be a sniper and shoot one person after another. Let me continue here. Then he takes them outside. Chapter 15, look at 4 through 6. Count the stars if you can. That's the God. He took them outside. And how many know out in the country, the stars are the same in the city, but they're sure a lot more beautiful out in the country. And all the lights, all the clamor was gone. And God said, come outside with me. Come outside. It was a prophetic moment. And he said what? Look up. Someone say look up. I'm going to ask you for a moment. Quit looking at your failures. Stop looking to your family. Stop taking account what's happened to you. You know, everybody wants to say what happened to you. I want to let you know the person next to you, probably something worse happened to them. But the Bible says to what? Look up. Look up. And I want to just take a moment and just say this to you. I want to declare this to you because this is true about God. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. I mean it. You are new every morning. You're new every morning. Hear it. Great is thy faithful. Great is thy faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. Count the stars. I'm going to ask you tonight to start looking up. Genesis 16, 1 and 2. Sarai born him no children. A couple key words here. Perhaps. Don't base your life on luck and chance. Base your life on the promises of God. But he said, perhaps. Perhaps what God said for glad tidings is a fairy tale. Perhaps what God intended for this place, we made it up in our heads. Maybe we should just give this great facility to denomination. Listen. All of us have a perhaps, and that has, needs to get out of our vocabulary because we don't want second best. We want God's best for your life, the very best that God has for you, whatever that might be. Perhaps. And then this is very interesting in verse 2, chapter 16. Abram heeded to the voice of Sarai. 
He submitted to her complaining. He submitted to the griping. He submitted to her doubt. He submitted to his guilt that he said it was from his sister two times. He submitted to it. And often what we do is we submit or heed to the voice of those around us. And that's why we're barren. That's why we'll never give birth. That's why we always have second best. I am not going to have second best. Chapter 16, verse 3. It says he took Hagar. He dwelt in a place of doubt. Look what the word says. For 10 years. For 10 years. How old was he? 75. Now he's 85. And he's no closer. And some of you heard from God three years ago. There was an excitement and there was a life about you and you knew what God's going to do to your children. But what happened is you chose second best, you heeded to the voice, and now you've missed God. You missed God. They told me in Muchen, I was 19 years old, they said, do not get off the train in Munich. Stay on the train. That's not your destination. But being the incredible know-it-all that I was at 19, how many were know-it-alls? I just want to get off for one second. It was two in the morning, and I just want to get off stretch. And, and that train left so quick. And I want to make this announcement. 2 a.m., I don't know any place in Europe that has more violent drunks than Munich. Well, how would you know? Because I missed my train. And the whole night, I had to stay awake. And another thing about beautiful Munich, all it does is rain. Rain. So I'm soaked with drunks, cold, in a place I should have passed through. I'm going to ask you tonight, how many have 10 years to spare because of your unbelief? How many have brokenness Despair and strength to spare going the wrong direction. You see, 16, 12, Genesis, Sarai, I bore him no children, perhaps heeded to her voice. 16, 3, he took Hagar and dwelt in a place he wasn't called. Have you ever been in a place you weren't called to, how miserable it was? Put your hand up right now. Miserable. Miserable. 16.4. She conceived. There's two things here in 16.4. And she looked at Sarai's womb and despised her. Another translation says contempt. Just pointed at her, God's not with you. God's not going to answer your prayers. You're too late. Your husband doesn't want you. And look what I have and you have nothing. Look what I have. Now the affection and the joy of your husband is no longer on you. You've lost your beauty. His eyes are on me. How many do not have 10 years of that nonsense? Put your hands up right now. 10 years of complete contempt, complete staring at you. How many have ever had someone stare at you like you're the biggest loser, you're a failure, you're this or that? How many have had your family members give you their opinion as if we want it? She conceived, but she despised and showed contempt. Genesis 16, 6. Sarai dealt harshly. Listen to this word. It's not happening. Your promise hasn't happened. It appears that God's never going to come through. It appears you're too late. And your personality changes. The kindness you had, the patience you had, the love you had, 
the thoughtfulness, and now she hates. How many of you ever found that yourself in a season you just hated everybody and hated everything? Hated your life, hated your job, hated your cat, kick. <laughs> just everything. You hate your car, you hate this, you, 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 you're, you're mad about that, you don't like the music, you don't like this, you don't like that. You just hate everything about your life. That's what happened to her. Sorry, I dealt harshly, cruelly to Hagar. Sixteen, fifteen, and Hagar bared Abraham a son and named it Ishmael. Ishmael is second best. But tonight I'm going to give you hope. God still has a Isaac. And for the Abrahams that didn't obey God, I want to let you know, and God's going to put his blessing on your Ishmael too. God is the God that can bless your failure. We serve the God that even though you rebelled, you were foolish, some of you right now, you know, you, you, you did the wrong thing. You lost your marriage and your kids hate God and you think your kids are cursed. They're not. We serve the God that blessed Ishmael for the sake of Abram. And God will bless you and your failure and your mistakes because he's your God. If you tonight will come under his leadership, You'll come under his mantle and you will build a brand new altar that says this, that Sarah will give birth to Isaac. Sarah will give birth to Isaac. You had big dreams, you had big hopes, you had big expectations, and it didn't happen. What happened was you lived life and life was hard. You lived life and there were setbacks. Some of you have lost your homes, you've lost your businesses, you feel like you're too old to start all over. I want to let you know that God will repay you with his goodness and mercy. He will give you shortcuts. Somebody help me in this place. He will save your steps and do for you what you couldn't do. You labored and you labored and you labored and you had something, but God has more than what you can dream, what you can think, what you can even pray. He's a God of more than enough. Somebody in this place, help me in this place. He's a God that steps in and says, I know that the promise hasn't happened yet. Somebody help me in this place. Hallelujah. And you're going to have to, in your strength that you have, you're going to have to stand your feet and say with me, I believe. Hallelujah. I believe in him. I, I believe in his mercy. I, I believe in his word. Hallelujah. What I have is not what God intended, but God is still going to take care of what I shouldn't have done, and he's going to bless me anyway. But l l let me help you. Come on, somebody. I said, let me help you. Hallelujah. You got to have a song when there's no song to be sung. You got to have a shout when you don't have a shout to shout. Uh, you got to have a dance when you don't have a dance to dance. Hallelujah. You got to have a praise when you don't have a praise inside of you. And you got to say, let God arise. Uh, let his enemies be scattered. Uh, let God arise. Uh, let the Lord God Almighty do the impossible, do the miraculous, do the supernatural life. I'm going to tell you right now, Ishmael is not what. What God has for you, but he has for you a hallelujah Isaac. The Bible says the word Isaac means laughter. Somebody in this place, you laugh at the devil. You laugh at his lies. Uh, hallelujah. You laugh at your barrenness. You laugh at your failure. And you say with me tonight, God is going to come through. I'll help you a little more tonight, and I'll say it this way. I've got a feeling. Uh, Everything's going to be all right. Uh, I've got a feeling uh, God's going to turn it for good, turn it for good. Somebody who's loved this house for a long time, uh, somebody that prayed for this place for a long time, uh, somebody stood for this place for a long time, why don't you just take a moment and say with me, God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Uh, God, turn it around. We never thought we'd have prophecy again. We never thought we'd have shouts again. We never thought we'd have a choir again. We never thought we'd have the prophetic again. We never thought we'd have the song of the Lord.
born again. But guess what? Isaac has been birthed in this house. Hallelujah. Isaac is alive, and God's going to bless our descendants. God's going to bless the neighborhood. God's going to bless the city. God's going to bless British Columbia. The revival is not going to happen somewhere else, but it's going to happen here. Hallelujah. Ah, ah, come on, somebody. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to praise him. 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 Come on, somebody. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Ha ha ha. Come on, hallelujah. Enough doubt, enough tears, enough groaning, enough hurt, enough pain, enough confusion. Enough is enough already. Praise the Lord. I said, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now you got to participate. How many are tired of walking around with your lip, bottom lip, hanging out? Maybe someone will feel sorry for me. If I look a little worse, maybe somebody will hand me a little money. If I'm really down, maybe that guy will da date me. If you're really down and you're really dirt, I want to tell you what the men should do. Run, run, run for your life. Hallelujah. That we want to see the redeemed of the Lord. Tonight, there's been prophecies made about your life. Oh, Pastor, how come it hasn't happened yet? Because you've been pre pregnant with Hagar, that's why. Pastor, how come it, it, it just hasn't happened yet? Because you're telling people, your wife's your sister. Somebody help me in this place. Hallelujah. There is no way on earth God's going to do what he said he's going to do if you're down. You got to bring your praise up. You got to bring your thanksgiving up. You got to begin to thank God. Now, I want you right now to push through your pain. Pastor, God told us we we're going to have children, but we're so old now. Jody Ann and I are thinking about having two more. Come on, somebody. Ha, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, what would you name them? I'd name them Ichabod and Jezebel. But you got to put the praise on. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I came to this, I came into this house and People go, I'm not going to worship. You can't make me worship. I'm not doing it. It's just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just not doing it. This place is crazy now. <laughs> Hallelujah. We got people from numerous nations just praising God. I want you to take one minute and thank God in faith for what he's going to do in your life. Come on. Hallelujah. I want you to thank God for what he's going to do in your life. Hallelujah. I want you to thank God by faith what he's going to do in your life. Hallelujah. God's not done with me yet. God's not finished with me yet. Glory. An anointing. There's an anointing. There is an anointing. Hallelujah. I never figured out why someone would call their child Billy Bob Billy Bob look at someone and say what's wrong with white people come on you can do that right now what is wrong with white people if you named your child Billy Bob I want to let you know you were drunk but you got to name it Ishmael or you got to name it Isaac and I'm going to ask you, how many, how many will say, 
There's Isaacs on the way. There's promise on the way. And when Isaac was born, the Word of God says this. She had laughter. She had laughter. And I declare over this house a new joy of the Lord, a new optimism, unusual faith. How many in the last three months have prayed a few unlikely impossible prayers and God's answered them? Let me see your hands right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unlikely improbable prayers and you prayed it and it's happened. Let me just see your hands. Be honest right now. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to tell you that Sunday is going to be a party. We are going to stomp on the devil's head. This place is going to be on fire like never before. I'm going to preach Sunday like I've never preached before. And I want everybody to know here, I, I might take a couple weeks and I'll just have to lay low, but everything's going to be all right. Just hear me right now. I said everything's going to be all right. Everything will be good. Hallelujah. And I'm loading my gun right now. I'm sorry, that's an American term. I'll, I'll do. How many want me to do a Canadian term? I'm loading my pea shooter. And I'm going to tell you what, I am going to retaliate on the devil. I am, I'm, no, when I say I'm going to retaliate, someone say with me, stomp, stomp. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Stomp, stomp, stomp. I am going to retaliate on the devil. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I want to pray for people right now. Just in the beauty of the house of the Lord. Shut your eyes for a moment. And say softly, Isaac. Say it softly. Just say it, Isaac. The impossible beyond your resources, even beyond your belief system. Lord, I thank you for the birth of Isaac in your people. And Father, I pray that our failures can still come under your blessing. We just thank you now. We just bless you. You're so good, God. You're so good. You're so good, God. God, you are so good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to thank all of those who were able to go to Seattle last Thursday. I want to thank you for being there. And uh, so you know that the money you gave him, he already sent it to Liberia and they're building the second story putting the roof on this week of the new school <laughs> they already he's, he's quite the guy I want to thank you for all of you who gave to the Philippines we're, we're building a, a, a brand new brand new children's center in a very very difficult place now, I, want to, I, want to, I want to say this to you that we will be in one, more than one place in the Philippines. We, we had to get in unity and start somewhere. We had to get in unity and start somewhere. And I think, do we have, I think we have almost over $20,000 in that account, don't we? Oh. Hallelujah. 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 So I want to thank everybody. I'm going to preach on Sunday like never before, and it's called Showdown. It's called Showdown. Uh -huh. I had a dear, dear, dear man of God from Pakistan. He was tough. God supernaturally delivered him. His, his father was the top fighter pilot in all of Pakistan. And he got born again. And his son ended up in Denver. And he didn't do very well. He wasn't born again yet. And it was 2 in the morning, he was in a park in the summer in downtown Denver, drunk out of his mind. And five guys got around him and said, we're taking you out. He said, yes, you are. But you don't want a murder rap, so you won't kill me. 
He said this. Someone say showdown. But when I get out of the hospital, I'll remember your names. And I'll find you. Wanted to come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I just taught somebody. Some of you, some of you girls, the guys go, oh, what is he talking about? And the girls go, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. I'll find it, every one of you. And you'll wish to God you didn't beat me up. Hallelujah. And we need to have a little of that. He's born again now. Hallelujah. He's, he was a great usher. He'd beat people up, but he was a great usher. Great usher. Hey, I want to commend the ushers tonight for the, your peripheral vision. I saw it on your eyes that you're seeing the house. Everything in this house is going to get better and better and better and better and better and better and better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to close with I got a feeling. But before we do that, planted in the house of the Lord, you'll flourish in the courts of our God. Love you. God bless you. Yeah. Uh -huh.